Dynamics 365 operations is the combination of Microsoft Dynamics AX and Microsoft CRM Online. So if you look at the features and functions, uh, those areas fall under those two, those two stacks and combined they make up Dynamics 365 Enterprise. And so um, you know, moving forward, uh, I'm going to hit a little bit on the operations and I'm going to turn it over to Rob to talk around some of the uh, you know, customer engagement type areas. Uh, but these, this is the combination of feature functionality, you know, again, brought together through that common data model. Um, you know, Dynamics 365 for operations is a full functioning solution built for really uh, several uh, key industries, retail, distribution, um, the um, manufacturing as well. Uh, we also have the um, public sector area. And um, so, and, and service would be the, the fifth. And so, if you look at the solution sets, it has full functioning around all the workflows and processes, all the way from uh, those areas up to the financials area. So, a uh, full-blown financial management as well as a reporting tool. It does include uh, its, its own separate HR module as well. Um, and it does, you know, from the ability of a, a modern user interface, you saw the web browser there, integrating the business intelligence, the machine learning, the big data. All those aspects are you know, good as it's part of that. And one thing I did want to highlight that's pretty important is, uh, and I'm going to just kind of move to the next slide, is this application lifecycle management. And this is a great solution for Microsoft that sits on top of our platforms that allows you as a customer and us as a partner to work together to manage the lifecycle of that solution. So all the way from deployment, so when, I, when we go to spin up a new version of Dynamics 365, we can actually do it all through lifecycle services. Typically speaking, and I'll be conservative here, within an hour, we can have a complete set of production and development environments in the Microsoft Cloud available. Uh, at that point, it then becomes a, what typically is a 40 to 80 hour process to build out the servers, get everything set up and running. We can then start right into the implementation of you know, working on the business processes and all the things important. So it really takes away a lot of the technology challenges that we have seen with some of our on-premise versions. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. Um, but as you know, you go across, it's, it's a, uh, across the integration platform, you know, high volume data, uh, a lot of flexibility for bringing data in and out of the system. It is a global based platform, so it is, you know, it's really based on AX2012 R3, which is the current version prior to this release. That's on premise, the, um, the, the tried and true version, I'll say. Uh, and it is comprehensive across you know, intercompany, uh, multi currency, multi language all those things that you would expect if you're doing, again, interacting with global or you actually have locations in multiple, loca uh, multiple geographies. Um, and so it is, a it is a very strongly supported developer platform using uh, Microsoft Visual um, development tools like C Sharp, Visual Studio, etc. cetera. Uh, and with this version, uh, it will have a continuous update. So there's no longer this major release cycle. Uh, on your, as you determine for Microsoft, uh, you let them know when you want to update as far as major updates, but certainly they're managing those continuous updates, and you're always getting the most recent feature functionality as part of the operations platform. Rob, I'll turn it to you for the uh, customer engagement. Well, thank you, Lance. Um, yeah, so this slide here represents the Dynamics 365 Enterprise version for customer engagement. And as you can see, there's five main areas of functionality that are in the D365 Enterprise version, sales, customer service, field service, project service automation, and marketing. Um, it, the, I'm only going to be able to touch on the surface of the functionality that's included here today, but rest assured on November 30th we're going to have another webinar that's going to dive deep into all the functionality, all the latest release of D365 that previously was CRM and CRM Online. <clears throat> uh, but let me start in the middle here on this slide. Marketing, uh, as you can see, um, it's, it's um, identified as Adobe. So Microsoft has made the decision to drop the current uh, Microsoft Dynamics marketing solution and move to the Adobe platform. It's really a, the leading edge and one of the, really the industry's top mar marketing platforms. And from that perspective, it's going to be built on Azure and integrated and completely a part of the uh, D365 Enterprise version. It's not yet available. That's yet to be in early 2017. There should be some more information and announcements for its release. but. Uh, really looking forward to that because it's a, a dynamic platform. Um, then let me spend a little time on uh, the other areas. So sales. Um, well, first of all, all of customer engagement is really meant to be to enable those uh, people that are closest to customers to be very efficient and effective in their work. So let's take, for instance, sales, um, customer management. Customer management is, is all about opportunities and sales processes as we know it today. 
but it also includes mobility and the ability to have partner channels to enable your sales associates to work with partners more effectively. Um, sales performance is all about dashboards and, and gamification. So driving performance through gamification of sales reps to get them to uh, perform at levels that you need them to do that ultimately um, drive the behaviors that you want to see sales reps do, whether it be generate more leads or uh, close more sales. Uh, personal engagement includes like email, intelligence, prioritizing your emails um, so that you know you are you basically uh, leverage your time more effectively and get to the customers that are most important. Um, actionable insight, um, that uh, has a lot to do with some of the machine learning as well. So think about lead prioritization. So as leads come in, they're prioritized automatically based on which are most likely to close or product recommendations like we talked about previously. So all very exciting functionality that's now being released and packaged together in sales. Uh, Lance also talked a little bit about relationship ins insights, but that extends even to emails for salespeople. So if a salesperson sends an email to an individual, they can see what the open rates are for those emails, much like a marketing person does uh, when they're sending out marketing uh, email campaigns. Now you can do it on a one-to-one -one basis um, for a sales individual. So that's very, very powerful to see if you know, you're actually making a connection with your customers as you, um, you know, send emails to them. On the service side, customer service side, um, lots of functionality that's listed there. Omnichannel, of course, is a unified service experience. So whether the individual is um, interacting with your customers by phone, email, uh, social, or chat, they, they have the ability to have the same experience across all those different channels. Um, Self-service, this is pretty self-explanatory, having your customer's ability to you know, be able to solve their own problems by basically going to either a website or having an interaction channel like that communities, um, as, as branded communities that look and feel just like your website with content. And that content is right out of CRM. So that CRM content could be cases that are open or other information, literature, and other things that you want specific either customers or partners to have access to. Um, agent enablement is intelligent case management. Again, having the intelligence behind creating cases. Um, and then uh, service intelligence allows you the ability to see trends and do forecasting and also have great dashboard functionality associated with it. On the field service side, that, if you recall a few uh, years ago, Microsoft made an acquisition of Field One, which was incorporated into CRM as field service capabilities and now that's rolled into Dynamics 365. So it's got all those capabilities that are necessary for a field service agent to be successful. And it includes things like scheduling and dispatching with automated routing and automated schedule scheduling to optimize the schedules of your resources. Inventory management, so you can track inventory as it leaves a, a warehouse and gets onto a truck and the field agent actually you know, puts it into uh, your customer's um, on-premise uh, solutions and then be able to track that through mobile, the mobile side and also being able to uh, do RMAs and such like that. Uh, connected field service is all about the predictive maintenance and um, it's also connected with the ability to leverage um, Azure for the Internet of Things. So if, if you are in the field service world and you're tracking anything that's, um, needs, that, that has the potential to break down and there's anything that you could track within that device, whether it's the temperature or the frequency of repetitions, so that you might be able to detect a potential breakage in, in things that are out in the field, um, connected to the Azure platform, able to create a field service case immediately so that you can get someone on site to remedy a situation. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to touch on project service. This is new functionality that was released um, in the previous version of CRM, now available for D365E. Um, and it's basically for any organization who needs to have resources execute certain tasks that look and feel like a project. So obviously it's a real good fit for consulting organizations, attorneys, um, uh, legal practices, but it's also a fit for organizations that uh, you know, have to do installations, for instance. So there are steps that are done in the installation. You need skilled resources to do those installations. And it's a mini project that you set up that has then the ability to do uh, tracking of time and materials, uh, expenses, the ability to do the billing, and, um, ultim and ultimately be embedded within calendars. So when you are an individual who's assigned to um, one of the projects, you the assignments show up on your calendar, and then 
you can interact with your calendar in terms of then posting the time and, and such like that. So really, it's really an unbelievable amount of functionality that's being thrown uh, out into the market at this point. There's a lot to digest here. And uh, like I said, there will be an upcoming webinar to get into this much more deeply. So let's begin to advance to the next slide. Um, a little bit here about pricing. Um, at the very bottom of the side, slide here um, is the device pricing. And um, at this point, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but there is some device pricing, and we can get into that specifically for those clients that are interested in discussing it further. But what I wanted to spend time is talking about the different um, and the addition pricing. So for full users, there's two different models. There's a plan one and the plan two. But realistically, from an application perspective, you have the ability to buy individual applications. So for instance, if you're interested in sales only, you could buy sales only. Or if you're only interested in field service, buy field service only. Um, but what Microsoft has done is they've, they've took, taken the functionality and created an unbelievably low price package if you buy it all. So the Enterprise Edition Plan 1 covers everything that previously was in CRM and is now in Dynamics 365 Plus because they've added quite a bit of additional functionality. At, a, at the discounted rate, you can see there is $115. Um, a couple of things there. There is transition pricing that's available. So you know, have, we can um, absolutely talk to you about what transition pricing means and what that means for you if you're on a different plan. Um, additionally, there is um, step-down pricing. So if, based on the number of users you have, uh, as it goes up, your prices come down uh, on a per-user basis. So that's $115 per month that's offered. Uh, the second plan is including the operations side. So for uh, $210 per month, you get the full operations side. Or you could decide just to buy the operations side individually for the $190 a month. So Microsoft's really done a nice job of making the pricing extremely attractive and you know, with the goal to help organizations to digest all the functionality and use it across the enterprise.